Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and welcome to part 6 of my series on building a Hacker News clone in Vue.js. As always, the full text version of this tutorial can be found on my website and I'll leave a link to this in the description below. So, as we continue to build this Hacker News clone up, the code within some of our components is going to increasingly grow. We need to start splitting our application up into multiple smaller components and in order for us to do this, we'll first have to learn some new concepts such as passing data into components using props. So in this tutorial, we're going to be creating an item.view component that will render a single item within our homepage.view component. And as you can see, the finished result is going to look something like this. Now, bear in mind, I'm going to be stealing a lot of the design elements from the official Hacker News project, which I'll leave a link to again in the description below. So let's jump back into our code editor. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is to define our new item.view component. So open up the source components directory and then create a new file called item.view like so. Let's make this slightly bigger. So as always, we're going to start by creating the template. And within this, we're going to want a div with a class of story. So div.story and then press tab. Now we're going to want a span, which will have a class of score, which will show our story's score. So story.data.score. Close that off. Next, we're going to want a router link component, which will link to the path of our story appended with the story.data.id and close that off and within this we're going to want to show the story's title so story.data.title and then we're also going to want to show the URL by doing this so span story.data.url and we're going to pipe this through a host filter and I'll show you how to create this in a few minutes. Finally, close this span tag and close this router link tag and then add a, a break line element to the end of this line. Next, we're going to want to show our story's metadata. So create a new span with class meta and we're going to want to do by and then show the story.data.by, which will be the author. We then want to do story.data.time ago, which will show the time that it was posted at. And finally, the number of descendants, so story.data.descendants. And this will represent the number of comments that have been made on that story. Save that and then create the script tags like so. Now within this export default block we want to specify the name of our component as we usually do and then we want to specify the props array which will dictate what we pass into our component. Now in this case we want to pass in an individual story which will then go on to populate everything that we've done up here in our template. I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can pass in an individual story to this component in a later part of this tutorial. Now bear with me. Finally, we also want to define our style for this component. And again, this is going to be scoped. Now, for the interest of time, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to steal all of this CSS from my website. And I'm just going to paste that in. Perfect. So now that we've done this, we need to open up our homepage.view component and we need to update the template so that we're no longer rendering all of this HTML. We're instead going to want to render all of our stories as individual story components. So delete this and then open up a new item component. And we're going to want to repeat this component v4 every story in stories, which is defined down here. And the key for this is going to be the same as it was last time. So story.data.id 
And next we're going to want to pass in each story to our individual item component. And we can do that by specifying story equals story. So we're binding this prop to this object here, which is defined here. Finally, we want to close that item component. Now within our script tag, we now want to import our item component. So import item from at components slash item. And we want to register this within the components attribute. So component like so and item to item. And finally, we need to address this. So come in here and delete that extra line at the end there and save. As you can see, everything successfully compiled. And if we then open up our application, you should hopefully see that all of our stories are now rendering out in their individual item components. And you'll hopefully agree that this looks a lot nicer than it did previously. Now, one thing to note is that if we open up the console, you should see that we have a view warning that says failed to resolve filter host. Now, this is that host filter that we added to our item component up here. So we're gonna have to now create that. So come into your source directory and then create a new directory called utils. Within this, we're gonna want to create a filters .js file and in the interest of time I'm going to add a very simple filter which will simply filter out all of the query strings and path parameters and simply return the host URL for a given URL passed into it. This filter will just simply remove things like the protocol used and the path and just return the host name. In order for our application to use any filters we define, we're going to have to import them and then register them within our view instance. Now, the way we can do that is by going into your main.js file and doing import star as filters from an utils slash filter, like so. Next, we're going to want to iterate over all of the filters within that file. So object.keys, filters, and then for each filter, we want to take the key of that filter and we want to do view.filter, passing in the key and filters key, like so. And this will register every filter within that utils filter file within our Vue.js application. Now, before I forget, save your filter.js file and then navigate back to your browser. Now, you should see that all of the URLs at the end of our story have now been shortened. Excellent. So at this point, I think it's worthwhile covering why we have just made a smaller item.view component instead of just pushing all of our code into one component. Now, by doing this, we effectively enable ourselves to reuse various parts of our code base in different places. It also helps us to break up a massive application into a series of smaller, easier to debug, digest, and expand upon components. So let's see a perfect example of how this works now. Let's create a new component called new.view. And we're going to copy and paste all of the items from our homepage.view into our new.view file. And instead, we're going to replace one of our API requests to new stories instead of top stories. Now, finally, we want to add a new route to our application. So open up the router index.js. And then just below our homepage route, we want to do path new. And we're gonna call this new. And the component we want to render is the new component, like so. We'll also want to import this. So import new from at components slash new and finally we want to fix this small issue on line 16 like so 
Now, the last change we're going to make to our project within this tutorial is to update our navbar.view component so that we can navigate between our homepage component and our new component. On line 4, change our anchor tag to a router link. And then remove the href attribute and change this to to and path equals forward slash like so. Also within our router link component here, we're going to want to change this from single to new. And instead of upload, we're going to do new stories. Perfect. Come back in here and refresh the page. You should see no errors, no warnings in the console. You should see our homepage component rendering as expected. And now if we go to the new route, you should see that all of the new stories on Hacker News that have just been posted are now rendering out within our browser. Nice and simple. So in this tutorial, we've looked at how you could break a growing application into a series of smaller components and start passing information from parent components, in this case our homepage.view component, to individual item.view components using props. Now in the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at how you can manage state within your Vue.js application using Vuex and improve the performance of our application by caching API results. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more programming content. Cheers.